for 11 there. We're going to talk twice about this once now real short and just say that that is where we're going to build the historical village. And then we'll get back to that and talk later on when we uh, the next little icons pop up there on our screen. Uh, and I think number 14 there is next. And uh, that is our fast forest. The fast forest. This is a place where we're going to grow things like bamboo and other really quick to grow crops yeah. that we can chop down and use them somehow on the property. Things from start to finish that you can plant in the beginning of a month and be able to harvest berries or radishes, else, but, you yeah, know, radishes. things that, like that. But but still following the permaculture food foresting method. Yeah. You know, we're not we're and we're not just honestly one of the things that are overlooked a lot as far as like the, the the foods that are really quick and accessible. The unfortunate part is they are massively invasive are invasive, but you and I both know that you can eat hydrangea. Right. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, there there's uh, Nasturgeums, I believe, that. Nasturgeums are wonderful. They taste like pepper. Um, Hydrangea <laughs> will kill you if you eat it. Do not eat it. <laughs> well, uh, do, do you know that? Because I don't even know what a... Yeah, it is I, uh, hydr not. Hydrangea are the big cotton ball flowers. I used to harvest them up at Sun Valley. Oh, okay. Um, number 13 there is our guest forest. This is where people are going to be able to... Um, come by and visit us, you know, they'll be able to, basically it's a nice forest that will be overlooking our lake, mm -hmm. it'll be one of the nicest areas that we build, and we'll build small little cabins in there for good friends. Good friends and the people who don't want to just drive an RV up and sit for a couple of days. I mean, if they're going to be up there, you know, taking a look at what we've, what we've created over, say, a week or two. So that that would be the place so that they feel more comfortable instead of okay I got to bring my own RV I can only park here you exactly know, this, this is for people like you know uh, Papa Bird and Sunshine and their family down there at mm -hmm. today's Wild Humans yeah they'll they'll be joining us sometime and coming up and visiting us uh, people like I'm gonna it's a just a Facebook name that I, I'm familiar with it's a Vestria Penelope family. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That woman, man, she's been backing us since day one. We love her, and I know that one day she's going to come visit our property and stay in one of our little cabins oh, out absolutely. there. Oh, absolutely. I've been seeing everything her and her husband have been putting on the page, and I'm really appreciative of it. I mean, the, the advice that they're giving is really good. Um, all right, let's see. Number... Okay, well, let's just fast forward through the rest of these numbers here and get these numbers up on the screen for you and then we'll just basically talk about them real quick 20 21 22 15 18 and 19 those 26 are 26 and 33 everything left up there except for 23 and 21 mm -hmm. so all those that just popped up except for 23 and 21 are not determined yet we want the people who are joining us that are coming from their families to have some sort of say so in what they want growing on our land as well. Absolutely. Pick a theme of one of these forests and make it yours. Make it yeah. a place that inspires you to work your land because it's your land just as well as it's ours. And honestly, man, we're we're all about you know what you grow, you can eat. Right. But if we're uh, when we open it up like that, people who do nothing but flower gardens and stuff like that. I mean, if they're inspired to come up and actually put the work in and make a flower garden that they can come up and visit in the summer or, you know, at whatever point of the, of, of the season, I have no problem with that. It's funny that there's some flower gardens we'll talk about in another video <laughs> on the map yet. He hasn't seen the full map, in real, so he's just... That's kind of cool. Um, now, number 21, we said, isn't one of these other undetermined places, and that's because that is what we call the Forbidden Forest. And that is where things that my wife and I and my children will not be able to go. I'll, I'll be able to go there because we're not going to be growing pineapples. It's a place for allergenic foods that the people who are living there aren't going to be able to go on to. Misty's highly allergic to onions, my children to blueberries. I'm allergic, like I said, to pineapple. Some uh, people are allergic to bees, so we'll keep the house of the beehives mm -hmm. there. Basically, it's a small. we'll have a small two-foot little wall around it whether that's hay bale, dirt, uh, cob, just anything. And then inside of that, anything that anybody is allergic, if you're allergic to something and you move onto our property, will grow. That's something only in that area. And then number 23, as you notice, it's light green, so it's more of a grassier area that we want to work with. 
and that will be our free campgrounds, the campgrounds for people who are coming down during the springtime to help us, people who... Travelers who just need a rest area. <laughs> that's right. Uh, people from, that are <coughs> rainbow, people that are travelers, people that are Roma, people that are Native American, people that are down on anything, people hitchhiking. that are down on your luck, people that are homeless somewhere. If you, you know, need a couple a week to stay, a month to stay, whatever, you know, come by, visit us. We love you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what this place is about. Okay. So all about family. That's right. Now, you come and abuse that, and we'll be asking you to leave, you know, obviously. If you're, oh, you'll you're be escorted sitting, off the property, If probably. you're sitting there getting drunk and being abusive or yeah. doing drugs or something hitting like that. Hitting your kid or hitting your woman or anything yeah, like well, that. Yeah, hitting your kid or hitting your woman, you know, you'll be dragged off the property, and then your ch kid and wife will ask, be, if they wish to leave, they can or and, they can stay. And honestly, going back to number eight... I have no problem wood burning the laws of Manabu Village out on a on a billboard for anybody who comes yeah. to our property to see. No abusing children, no abusing women, no you abusing know. hard substances, stuff like that, or you will be asked to, leave. asked to leave or escorted away. All right, anyways, back on a more positive thing. Yes, yes. Um, let's see, what's the next image that pops up on our screen? That's something that will obviously be done way before now. It's our cropland areas. And we're going to put mini croplands right near our home mm -hmm. because that's where we'll go and work them. And then also I think we want a cropland up by 23. That way there's a free garden for those people who come and stay and visit us in your free area. Yeah. yeah. You never know. They might be inspired to stay a little bit longer just because of the fact that there's food there that they can go outside and pick and eat. That's right. Now, number 12 there is our herb greenhouse. That's right. Number 7, 9, and 12 are all herb related yep. because we want to break as we said earlier in this video the Guinness Book of World Records right now holds it at 6,000 herbs or medical herbs on one property mm -hmm. and we want to break that herb that record and complete I mean I think between those three areas we'll be able to break that record in sure fact we want to break a lot of records we want to break the large aquaponics area we want to break the trees the most amount of food producing trees in an area mm -hmm. we want to try to we want to try to break a lot of world records out there not just be, not to be famous or anything but because it needs to be done that and that's within our power to do i mean all it does or all it takes is the the manpower the motivation and the seeds to do it i was kind of disappointed when i heard the number for the largest herb garden in the world was six thousand not sixty thousand not six hundred thousand yeah. but six thousand yeah i would have like, thought that it would have at least been over ten thousand right you know so yeah uh, let's see. What, 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 uh, there's probably other things that haven't popped up yet that needed to have been built way earlier on. Let's see what pops up next. Is, oh, next is some animal carriages there. That's our 27 is our goat pins and pig pins and things like that. Um, um, I'm good to work with anything from goats, uh, anything that doesn't have wool on it. And if you remember back to our first video, the little dark section at the beginning that was our septic tank, then the little, I kind of stuck with the same model there. Number 27 has that little black section at the bottom. That is where we hope to install a, a biogas generator unit that will access the methane CH4 coming off of all this, an, some of this animal waste to mm. create heat, create electricity for our homes. Yeah. Number 28 is our chicken and guinea hen giant compost pile so that they can go and grab all the worms and the goodness that they ever wanted. It also provides them warmth in the winter. It gives them protein to lay more eggs to. That's right. <laughs> Number 29 there can be where quail are being raised and also our rabbits because mm -hmm. we love our rabbits. Oh yes we do. Um, and then next is these solar panels and windmills all over the property. Which hopefully by that point, we won't even have to put in ourselves. Yeah, um, hopefully, every time we've got a little bit of extra money, mm -hmm. because we used to spend that money on frivolous, stupid stuff, and we might still spend some of it on frivolous, stupid stuff. We aren't saying we're going to go completely yeah. eco-friendly, but 
Each time we got a little extra money, we would like to buy an extra solar panel, an extra windmill. Heck, I look at it like this. The, the bit of extra money that we have while we're in, in a city setting, paying off bills still, the money that we do have that we've been, you know, starting to, to move with is we're buying each other homes to travel to our property with. Right. And after we get up there, that bit of extra money, you know, I mean... The reason why we paid six thousand dollars extra for our chunk of land versus the land right next to it for the six thousand dollars cheaper for 20 acres was because it had a power pole now you think why are we so concerned about getting a power pole when we want to live off grid not because we want to drain from that power pole but because we want to we'll sell back to the electric company that's right if you count the power that's if you count each one of those solar panels on the thing as a thousand watt system and each one of those windmills is a 500 watt system that's 2,600 watts drawn on the map right there. Yeah. More than more than we could ever use in in any allotted time. 26,000. Yeah, yeah 2,600,000. Anyways, it's an insane amount of power that we would never need enough. I would like for all, you know, there's 26 people living out in Termal County. Yeah. I'd like us to have a free battery exchange. That would Drop be awesome. your battery off. That's, you need your power grids going low of your solar panels there. Drop it off and pick up a fresh one here for us. Yeah. You know, and by the time you come back to drop the next one off, that one will be charged. Exactly. I'd like to see us giving away food to our neighbors, giving away power to our neighbors, giving away water to our neighbors. I'd like us to be the community center. Yeah. For. Our